Now, if I had to rebuild my life from scratch, there are just a few things that I would do from the beginning that I think would make the biggest difference. Now, maybe these are not things that you've heard before, and so I thought I would take a minute to share some things in 2021 that I would do differently to rebuild my life from zero. What's up, you guys? Alex Hine here. So I've included a free journaling worksheet right beneath this that will help you figure out how to get your life together and plan it out going forward. It'll give you a simple exercise you can do today to figure out what exactly you want and how to actually make it happen. So that's right below this video. So the first thing is this idea of the lion tracker. I heard this idea of just choosing the next best track from a guy named Boyd Vardy. Now, Boyd Vardy runs, I think, actually a safari company in South Africa. And he had this book that I believe is called A Lion Tracker's Guide to Life. And he said something that I thought was very wise that I thought can help you. And I think he did a great job of encapsulating this idea in a way that really makes this subjective feeling very clear. So what he said was that the job of the lion tracker is just to track the next step, right? You just track the next track because right now you may not know where that track will lead. Is this track going to go to the watering hole? Is this track going to go deeper into the jungle? Is this track going to bring you to the carcass of a gazelle it just killed? Your job as the tracker And for you, the tracker of your own life, is to just find the next track. And that next track will lead you to the next track. And you can't always know where the track is going to lead. And in the same way, the lion tracker eventually always loses the track, as Boyd says. But that's just a piece of tracking. And I thought this was a great analogy. Because the way that I have framed it for people is there's a whole chapter in my book, Milk the Pigeon, And it says the drunken staircase analogy. And the analogy I come up with is that trying to figure out what to do with your life is a lot like coming home from the bar at 3 a.m., hammered, trying to go up steps at night. You turn on the flashlight on your phone and you're shining it on the steps and you're just trying to get that first step. And you know that if you can drunkenly get the first step, then you can probably get the next step. And if you can get that next step, you can probably get the third step. You know what I mean? So if you can figure out how to get those furry first steps with your flashlight in the middle of the night, you know you're going to make it into your bed safe and sound. But you don't have to see the whole staircase, at least for the time being. You just need to get on the drunken first step. So in the same way, the lion tracker just tracks the next best step, even though you don't know where your whole path may lead. And let's be real, if you're trying to get your life together or rebuild it, one of the first things you want to do is figure out what makes you feel good or feel well on a daily basis. The second thing I would do if I was trying to get my life together is I would follow Susie Batiz, the CEO of Poopery's advice on resonance or dissonance. So Susie Batiz, if you don't know her, is the founder of Poopery, the CEO. She has an incredible story of how she went from suicide attempts, double bankruptcy, divorce, thinking she's the worst entrepreneur in the world, and in general, really feeling and kind of externally seeming like she didn't really have her life together that much. She struggled a lot. And now Poopery is a $500 million company. And she likes to share the story because how was it possible that this woman could go from being so not together to being so together now? And she shares this idea of resonance and dissonance because she said that, you know, after her second bankruptcy, she would have attempted suicide again, but she had kids. And so she dedicated the next few years of her life to healing. And the main thing that she began doing as she healed was she promised herself she would never ever do anything in business that didn't feel good. So she started applying this idea of resonance or dissonance to her whole life. Meaning, if she went out to dinner with somebody, did she feel elevated, energized, turned on, excited by that conversation and that person, that relationship? Was it neutral or was it repulsion? And then she started applying that to everything in her life. Does eating that meal make you feel more excited? Does doing that work make you feel more excited? Does being with that person make you feel more excited or more drained? And as you begin practicing this exercise, you become very dynamic or very fluid because you and you develop this antenna or this sixth sense for experiences and people and dates you go on and foods you eat. And you begin to understand which of the things will make you feel better after the fact and which of the things will make you feel worse. And sometimes it's not what you would have expected. And so take some time to do this resonance or dissonance exercise, recognizing that some things are going to make you feel good, some will make you feel neutral, and some are going to make you feel worse. But the more you train that faculty, the more you can recognize it throughout your life.
The third thing I would say, if you're trying to get your life together, is to keep a daily log to make sure you are not BSing yourself. So I coached hundreds of 20-somethings throughout my late 20s, primarily with life coaching and career coaching and that kind of thing. And I was often surprised to see, first of all, these were ambitious people because they were already willing to pay someone to be a coach, and most people would not do that. But even these small sample of ambitious people, they were often not taking as much action as they thought. And let's be real. If you want to be an author, you have to write every damn day. If you want to be an athlete, you have to train or study your game every day. If you want to be a doctor, you have to study or see patients every day. There is no way around actually doing things if you want to be great at what you do. And if you just want to see results in your life, if you want to feel well, if you want to get your life together, you probably are also going to be doing things to make that happen. So what I recommend is keeping this journal to track the amount of action you are taking. Because just like I found with the hundreds of people I had coached, very few people are taking that much action. They all say they want to write a book, but in the last week, can they even point to three hours they spent writing the book? Most people cannot. You want to build a business, can you point to even one hour per day building your business on paper? If you want to program an app, if you want to be in a relationship or make new friends, can you really objectively show to yourself you've actually done some work every day? You've done something to make that happen. You've done a ritual. So I think the third step is not to fool yourself. Because we are very, very easy to fool, and we like to think we're doing our best. Maybe we really are, and maybe we aren't. And we have to be honest with ourselves about that. Now, one of the most useful things in my self-growth journey has always been audiobooks and self-growth material. And one of the best sources for that these days is a company called Skillshare that actually has courses and classes and is an awesome community for people that want to get better. Check out all of the online learning communities and programs that Skillshare has with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people on topics like illustration, design, photography, video, freelancing, and more. So take, for example, this course called DIY Filming that I went through. It really helped me, number one, figure out how to really storyboard my video in a much more strategic way versus just being a teacher, as well as how to properly prep a short but sweet kind of highlight reel, as well as edit it, put it together, and really polish it to be a much, much better presented piece of content. So Skillshare has classes to fit your schedule and your skill level. Members get unlimited access to thousands of these different kinds of classes with hands-on projects and feedback from a community of millions of people. Now the classes are usually under an hour and they have short lessons to help you fit any schedule. But I would definitely go ahead and check out some of the topics that you might like. Like for example, there are courses on journaling and design. There are courses on the fundamentals of DIY photography or even cinematography and low budget filmmaking. Making. You can even learn how to make your creative side gig your full-time job. And for a lot of these online ways to learn, you can have access to all of these in an unlimited amount. Now, before you guys go, make sure you check out the special package Skillshare has put together just for you, for the first viewers watching this video. The package is listed right below this video and the special offer for those of you that want to check it out, it's right below. All right, you guys, so make sure you check that out. And before you go, I have two other related videos for you there.